a new 5e book is out. It's giant. I mean, it's about giants. It's not actually giants. There's a new barbarian subclass here. It's called Path of the Giant. We're gonna check it out. I did a video of the UA version of this like a year ago. And with this official release, it's not changed very much. But I'm gonna cover it again and this time bring even more math than I did last year. Welcome to Pack Tactics. Kobold, I can be a giant alligator now. Yeah, that's actually true. Isn't that fun? Yeah. Anyways, let us begin. Giant's power. You learn to speak, read, and write giant, or one other language of your choice, if you already know giant. Additionally, you learn a cantrip of your choice, either druidcraft or thaumaturgy. Wisdom is your spellcasting ability for this spell. The cantrip I would pick here is thaumaturgy, as it allows you to open really big and heavy doors. It doesn't work on a locked door, however, but it's still really good. Or you can use it to scream super loudly. That must be the giant blood boiling in your body. Roar! Exactly, Gator. Next up is basically the biggest damage increase this subclass gets. It's Giant's Havoc. Giant's Havoc. While raging, you gain the following benefits. Crushing Throw. When you make a successful ranged attack with a thrown weapon using your strength, you can add your rage damage bonus to the attack's damage roll. Giant Stature. Your reach increases by 5 feet, and if you are smaller than large, you become large along with anything you are wearing. If there isn't enough room for you to increase your size, your size doesn't change. While crushing throw is a nice boost while getting up close and personal to your enemies, it doesn't do that much for most barbarians. The big increase in damage that barbarians get is not the rage damage bonus, but reckless attack. And that still only works on melee weapon attacks, not ranged weapon attacks, which throwing your weapon counts as. It's still useful because melee combat is not always about melee. Check out my how to optimize melee video if you want to learn more. Giant stature is really good. I appreciate the range increase too. With Polar Master, you can now attack enemies from 10 to 15 feet away. If an enemy walks up to us, we can strike them from quite a distance. There's a bit more to this, but I'll get to that at the end of the video when I talk about DPR. Next feature gives you lots of maps. This video is sponsored by Chipeco, where you can get over 4,000 maps just like that. You'll never get lost ever again. These maps varies from seasons, day and night, weather effects, and much more. If your players spend too many hours in the tavern planning their next move, you can seamlessly switch to nighttime to make fun of them for taking forever to progress the game. Some of these maps are fully animated. I've never played in a game that uses these, but if I was a DM optimizer, I would absolutely use them to enhance immersion. Here we have the market district. Shove a ton of merchants here, find a basic background sound, maybe some music, and boom, you've got it. You don't really need to describe very much because everything's on the screen. I highly recommend checking out Chipeco on Patreon. You get tons of maps and you get access to their Discord. So if you're having a hard time getting these maps on your preferred VTT, it's just to shoot the community a message and they'll help you. New sponsor, give them some love, click the link. Back to the video. Next up at level six, you get Elemental Cleaver. When you enter your rage, you can choose one weapon that you are holding and infuse it with one of the following damage types. Acid, cold, fire, thunder, or lightning. While you wield the infused weapon during your rage, the weapon's damage type changes to the chosen type. It deals an extra 1d6 damage of the chosen type when it hits, and it gains the throne property with a normal range of 20 feet and a long range of 60 feet. If you throw the weapon, it reappears in your hand the instant after it hits or misses a target. The infused weapon's benefits are suppressed while a creature other than you wields it. While raging and holding the infused weapon, you can use a bonus action to change the infused weapon's current damage type to another one from the damage type options above. 
We have another boost to throne weapons. They return now. We're like Kratos or Thor. I love the flavor. We definitely won't be losing our favorite magic items anymore. Throw it into a pit. Boom. Pops back in your hand. It's still not incredible due to the lack of reckless attack, but it's absolutely acceptable. It's even got a unique interaction with nets, allowing us to attack with them without disadvantage. So if you want to make like a concept build using a net, here it is. This is perfect. But the biggest boon here is the additional damage as well as the change to damage type you deal. This allows us to negate damage resistances with non-magical weapons. You can also take advantage of damage vulnerabilities depending on the situation. The best option for an element here is usually thunder because it's the least resisted out of the bunch. The second one is acid, but you can do whatever you want. You know the situation better than I do. The next feature is super fun, it's like Mega Telekinetic. Telekinetic is one of my favorite feats, by the way. Mighty Impel, your connection to giant strength allows you to hurl both allies and enemies on the battlefield. As a bonus action while raging, you can choose one medium or small creature within your reach and move it to an unoccupied space you can see within 30 feet of yourself. An unwilling creature must succeed on a strength saving throw to avoid the effects. If, at the end of this movement, the thrown creature isn't on a surface or a liquid that can support it, the creature falls, taking damage as normal and landing prone. Let's pull up the map. You can move anyone within the red square to anywhere within the pink square. That's a lot of squares. This is awesome combined with control spells. You can push enemies into things like web or sleet storm, for example. If you do use them on an enemy, make sure to move them up diagonally or just vertically. That way they also take fall damage. Because we are large at this point, we can also take advantage of our size to drop them from even greater heights. If we just assume a fall of 30 feet, they take 3d6 damage for an average of 10.5. It's not going to be better than our usual bonus action attacks, but if they fall into a spell effect, then it's a nice bonus. Next up, Capstone. Demiurgic Colossus. What a super cool name for a feature, by the way. When you rage, your reach increased by 10 feet. Your size can increase to large or huge, your choice. And you can use your mighty impel to move creatures that are large or smaller. In addition, the extra damage dealt by your elemental cleaver feature is increased by 2d6. This is awesome for our capstone. Basically, all our features became better, even if indirectly. Our red square from before becomes even bigger due to the increase in reach. I don't feel like going on roll 20 and drawing it out again. You can imagine. Th this is an imagination game. Also, if you're using a weapon with reach, your reach is even bigger, blah blah blah. You get the point. I really enjoyed this subclass. If we saw stuff like this in 1 and I I would be very happy. This is now the best barbarian subclass in the game, and I'm super happy about it. Barbarians deserve a boost for sure. And now we gotta talk about the elephant in the room. Oversized weapons. If your table doesn't homebrew oversized weapons to not work, the damage is incredible. If they do, it's still solid. Don't get me wrong, it's still really good. Oversized weapons is quite a controversial topic. When I made a video about it, a lot of people disagreed and think the rule is only meant for NPCs. But that's not what the rule says, and I won't budge on that. I read it on video and underlined it. The rule doesn't even rely on player characters being monsters, even though by definition they are. I recommend checking out the Tabletop Builds article or my video if you want to know more. I'm not going to dwell on this any longer. Just know that the results I got are from both usage of oversized weapons and not oversized weapons. So if you disagree with oversized weapons being a thing, then just look at the normal results then. It's not a big deal. By the way, I'm not sure if having a glaive on your back necessarily counts as wearing. I'm leaning heavily towards yes, 
but I kind of want to read comments about it. If the answer is no, then you might as well carry an oversized weapon with you to combat. The big downside to this is getting magical oversized weapons is a lot harder for you. But anyways, I asked Pi Guy from Tabletop Builds to help me with the math because I think I made some mistakes regarding the hit chance and some other things last time. But the results remain largely the same. For this comparison, I'm looking at Zealot Barbarian for this new subclass. Both subclasses follow the progression of Tabletop Build's Basic Build Barbarian, which basically means a straight class Barbarian with Palm at level 1 and Great Weapon Master at level 4. Enemy's AC starts at 13 and eventually goes up to 19. One encounter is assumed to last 4 rounds. We get Palm Reaction Attack every other round. When we rage, we do so on the first round of combat, before the palm reaction attack. Reckless attack is always active. We are assumed to always be able to attack in melee in round 1. Celis Presence, the Celip Barbarian's once per long rest resource, is not accounted here. That's not a big deal, don't worry about that. And here are the results. With oversized weapons, Giant Barbarian is far and away the winner from level 6 and onwards. While without oversized weapons, it's basically as strong as Zealot Barbarian damage output wise. I'm very happy with this new Barbarian. Usually Barbarians teeters out a bit near the end. Being able to do good damage is really important for melee marshals, because they take all the damage by going into melee. With the results here, it's absolutely worth going in there. This subclass is a fantastic addition to the game. Great job Wizards of the Coast. I'm really happy about this. End the video, I am going to cover feats and backgrounds eventually, and maybe magic items. The wizard and druid subclasses were cut, sadly. I was really looking forward to dinosaur subclass, but oh well. I really want to read this whole book, but I'm playing in a Storm King's Thunder game, and I know for a fact my DM is going to use this book. Anyways, if you like this video, please like, share, and subscribe. And if you want to support me on Patreon, you can. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.